All right, we're here with part two of how I made 55 billion in less than five hours. So I had already filmed this, but it basically doubled the size of the video. So we'll just cut into uh, what I prepared for you earlier. If you haven't watched part one though, go back, check that out. It's the last video in my channel. I uh, essentially just, it shows me buying sharps for minutes and my thinking through it and with a lot of really important economics. So this is just the aftermath of it. So watch part one first, here's part two. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. Pretty crazy, right? Now remember that advice at the end, right? Don't copy what someone does. You have to make sure what you do is the product of your own conclusion. Use that as a stepping stone in your education and learning markets in general and learning economics. Uh, it's all very readable, you guys, the markets. It's like reading fault lines in the earth. You can recognize and see these things. It's the same stuff I've been telling you guys for four years in Black Desert. It's very readable. You can do it. Here's a really good example of how it worked. So after this point, uh, it's pretty funny actually. So I bought all the sharps and I let people know as their heads up. I was like, hey, so just so you guys know, I took action uh, and I bought these. And a couple of people were actually furious. <laughs> They're like, you've got... <laughs> They're so mad. They were so mad at me. They thought a heads up meant that they could get in on the purchase. If you know what happens to Francisco D'Ancona's copper, you'll know that riding the coattails of someone's brain is the worst thing you can do. So when I was giving them the heads up that I had already purchased it, that meant that in the coming days, people would still flood the market with these things and that they could, if they wanted to, uh, decide if they wanted to make an investment as well. Anyway, what was interesting is, so a day or two after this, people just bought them for the sake of buying them. And I've got a chart here, which is pretty funny. So you can see that after I made my purchase and sharp shards, the price actually more than doubled. It hit about two point, or just, just about doubled. It was hit about 2.8 million a piece within the first week of this happening. Everyone was like, oh my God, this is, I'll never get sharps again. This greedy guy bought them all, his server messages. A lot of people were pretty hateful about it. To be honest, it did a great job at revitalizing the economy. It really at least helped a, it got some silver in the hands of thousands of players. And like I described earlier, that is what it takes. So we saw cron meals turn around, we saw drafts turn around, and it was great. Honestly, it was, it definitely did impact it. Um, and then outside of that, after the big run-up after a week, it came back down and was men again. Because again, like I said, I wasn't manipulating the price. I wasn't buying them so there would be a shortage, so that everyone would have to get them for me. No, no, no. I bought them because they had more value than people wanted for them. They wanted 1.4 million, I saw them as more valuable. So I said, okay, great. And that value doesn't change in a week or so. So people still had this perception that they were men price. So after all the copycats, uh, riding on my coattail people settled down and went back to men and I bought a few more thousand and it was great So at the end of that video, I bought 21,000. I ended up buying a total of 25,000 um, So yeah, I sold all the gear as I described in the beginning of this video and I waited seven full days after this decision to buy the hard charts as well and uh, I wanted to focus on weapons. I wanted to focus on weapons primarily because I know those are just going to have a little bit more of a flux. Uh, armor stones, I mean, there's a reason that they're, the price is a little bit less. Uh, there's more armor pieces, there's less weapons, all that, you know, there's a difference in rarity and things like that. But I decided that I would go ahead with it. Um, and so one, one big thing that I didn't actually describe in the like journey of purchasing there uh, were the major economic factors why why the inflation was the way it was. So previously we had an issue on the North American market where you could cron your your armors for like, God, it was like 30 bucks basically. You could do a pen attempt for about 30 bucks. They, they made a mistake somewhere. NA was bugged, EU was not bugged. And so Kakao knew this was happening. <laughs> and did nothing they did nothing and so i'm trying to figure out like hey can we do this this doesn't make any sense we have to have a server-wide rollback right because the cron prices were at half for no reason at all um the amount of crons you need for armor and weapons correlates to the price of sharps and hearts so when we had an all-time low price of hard shards 
you barely needed any crons at all to do a pen attempt. But there was something else that made it one half of the all-time low it should have been. And the EU server was not like this. And no other server was like this. This was a bug in North America. But everyone was like, hey, now's my chance to get pen armor. And so they would spend money on costumes and for about 30 bucks, you could do a pen attempt. And I got in contact with Kakao and they're like, we are not making a decision. Literally, that's what they said to me. We are not making a statement on whether this is good or bad. We will we'll write out the weekend. And I didn't want to touch it because we don't know, right? We didn't know if it was going to be rolled back. We didn't know if it was going to be declared an exploit. We, I, we just didn't have any information. And it was absolutely a bug for sure. But Kakao, who was selling costumes, was like, hey, this is, this is fine. So at the end of the weekend, they just said, okay, we're gonna leave it alone. No rollbacks, nothing else. And not only did I take no part in that whatsoever and missed a tremendous opportunity. I mean, it took me two years to get my first pens, right? And I bought the first pen Nuver Shield ever sold in an A, the first pen Muskins ever sold in an A, first pen Red Nose ever sold in an A. I saved silver diligently and I waited for this opportunity and other people didn't expect it because those items were worth more and I got the first ones ever sold and it took years to do this. And I'm already uh, kind of getting the chills looking at Blade Poker's name in this uh, in this arena already. Uh, you played as a teammate of his last time. The man has purchased in the last month three pen items. <laughs> three pen items, count. It has been an amazing month for Blade Book West, and he's actually it's four out. technically. Uh, are, are you kidding me? No, is four he... pens. And I got the first ones ever sold, and it took years to do this. And now, in a day or two, we had literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pens. When like the first year in Black Desert, there were only I think 56 pens made. It was just nonsense. It was crazy. So we have this, right? We have this thing. And so the two big factors of this cron issue was that people were spending silver on crons. So yes, they were spending real money, but also they were spending silver. And so we had the biggest exodus of silver we have ever seen. Never before in the NA market have we had a bigger just depletion of silver because of this cron. It was like a fabulous opportunity if you took advantage of it and everybody I know did. So that was a way to just floor the silver supply. It was just trash. The other thing is, guess what? When you're spending silver for a bugged fraction of the cost cron price trying to get pin armor, what you're doing is when you succeed, and eventually, I mean, they did, they would do this until they succeeded, you now have a commodity, an item, that is now worth a certain amount of silver, right? You hit from tet to pen, boom, its price tag just blows up. Well, guess what? Where's the silver? Do you see any silver? No, because it doesn't generate silver. All it does is create an item that absorbs silver. Now, this is really complicated, but try to understand. Think of it as like two nets, right? We've got a bottom net of silver. You've got a top net of items, right? Every item, because this is not an economy that uh, is just completely left up to the players, every item has a price. So the item itself absorbs or like is a sponge for or a cushion or correlates to a certain amount of silver, right? So if an, if an item goes from tet to pen, it's immediately worth this much more silver. It just absorbs that much. Well, we had the first net disappearing, right? Because people were just throwing silver away. And we had the bigger top net of, of items just ballooning, just going crazy. Like pens were being made all over the place. You just saw it constantly. So we have a huge increase of items that were now just tens of billions or you know, over 10 billion. So that right there was the biggest recession we've ever had. Now, interestingly enough, that happened directly after the central market. Now on the way to the central market, we had the biggest run up of prices ever. Mostly because everyone thought as soon as the central market's there, we can all get the real value for things and so everything's gonna go up. So when people are telling me, I explained the sharp or the shock elixir incense, right? 
Uh, when people are telling me, hey, don't sell now, sell after the central market, we're all going to get more money, I'm not selling now, that's all I heard. Nobody was selling before the central market because they were waiting for the central market to get the best prices. So I was selling like Knights Combat's rations for 75000 and like, I was so happy. I was like, no, 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 I have my own price points, and if I can get this, I'm doing great. I don't care what you think you're going to get, I'm making like 100% more than I'd ever expect to get, so this is great. So I took advantage of that, so I ended up having a huge supply of silver before the central market, which was kind of nice. Uh, and then we had the huge run-up of prices because everyone had the buying frenzy. I explained the role of fear and greed, uh, where all the prices went up, and that was very short-lived because we had never experienced that before. So then all the prices came back down. So we have a huge crashing of prices. Everyone's hopes and dreams, you know, they're like, oh no, I thought I was gonna be able to sell this. So they have all the items that they stockpiled, they couldn't sell it, and then also we have the biggest removal of silver we've ever had and then we have the huge ballooning of the pen armors and occasionally weapons but mostly armors so these are two huge factors that i made my judgment call on most people say i lucked out because the shadow rain was canceled well that's nice and all but guess what that actually made almost no difference at all because whenever you looked at this, the price of sharps were floored, and there were tens of thousands of them. The price of concentrated weapon stones, which were the only thing that Shadow Arena gave out, were not floored. They weren't even min price. They weren't. They were up there correlating to the price of sharps. Now, if it was the other way around and the Shadow Arena created such a surplus of concentrated weapon stones, then those would be the ones that were at min price, and those would be the ones with a huge surplus, and then sharps, which were not as abundant, would just basically be low as well, but they would be floating around a little bit under the minimum price for concentrated weapon stones, not the other way around. So when Shadow Arena was canceled, it was great. I had about 50,000 shards, and there was no longer that to add any supply to it, but it's not what I relied on, it's not what I made my decision on. It did make all of my profits come around much faster, but it did not cause my profits. So you guys, as an, ec as an economist and as an economic standpoint, you need to understand the difference. Now there was one third factor that I judged this on, and that third factor was that we had a three year anniversary event at the same time as a gathering event. And I don't think we had an accessory event, it's possible. And that three year anniversary event was every single day, every player gets three sharps and three hard shards. So we had a tremendous run up of supply for these components that go into enhancing. We've had it every day, and I think it was three weeks, if not more, because they love to extend these events. It's crazy. I've disliked the events from the beginning, but it doesn't mean that I won't use them right we're all playing the game so even though i don't think it's good for the economy i'm happy to explain why all these factors impact the economy so we have those three things right the cron bug the cacao made so much money off of they said who cares we have the uh, great run-up of prices and run down at the start of the central market and then we have the huge abundance of handouts for sharps and hearts now i analyzed this decision for seven days uh, it was seven days until I took action on the hard shards, but that was a separate seven days. I took one entire week for before I made the sharp decision, only opening my game and looking at the market. That's all I did. I didn't even play it. I was just thinking and I was looking at items and I was analyzing this to judge as well as I could the rate of supply of silver versus the rate of supply of items and learn what I needed. And I did. I learned exactly what I needed. And I pointed out that the pen prices were actually fairly high, right? And so what that indicated was, at this particular point, in the players' minds, they all thought the recession was much worse than it actually was. I knew it was bad, but in the players' minds, it was like hopeless, right? Like no need to cook, no reason to gather, no reason, it was like they couldn't sell things. It was a really tough time for most players in North America. Um, but the fact that the pen weapons, for example, were still in the teens of billions, I guess, uh, shows that the prices of sharps and hards were unnaturally low, even juxtaposed the other items that were deflated. So that was my overall thinking. That was the three economic factors that I made my final decision on. 
and it obviously proved to be a great decision. It was the most amount of money I've ever made in the shortest amount of time. Like we all celebrated the wagon reveal. That was really cool. That was 30 billion and over a hundred hours of work. It was a lot of, I mean, comparatively, I guess not all that much time. Um, but this, we're looking at 55 or 56 billion profit in a few hours. This didn't take, okay, I guess if you could add the uh, analyzing time, because I mean, I guess you'd have to, right? But in terms of actually knowing that it, it worked, right? We're looking at anywhere from two to five hours of buying and then selling and analyzing. I mean, I just have a good time with that anyway, but uh, now that I think about it, yeah, they want to factor that time in. But it was the most amount of silver I had ever made in the less, least amount of time. So the overall numbers sold a Ted Ogre. God, I, th that one, I had to like really hesitate on that. Ted Tungrad, uh, I didn't get the best prices for it. I did sell my Ted Tungrad for 16 billion. That was one of the, when they were running down. Um, they had actually hit 20 billion, but I'm looking at this like, dude, I gotta get rid of this thing. But it took me a long time to decide. Uh, Tri Crescent, my Vell's Heart, my Ted Bassey Bill, my Pen Moskins, my Pen. Wait, did I say Pen Red Nose? I don't know. No, I didn't. In the first part of the stream. I sold my Pen Red Nose later to get a Pen Crescent. Uh, but I sold my Pen Nuver, my Pen Griffin. So I sold all those guys and then invested 51 billion and 25,000 sharps, 21.8 thousand hard shards. I think I might have actually bought 2,000 more around there. Uh, and then they ended up having a total net worth of about 130 billion. So after taxes, it was 107, which means I made 56 billion profit. So most amount of silver I ever made in the shortest amount of time. Obviously a lot of things go into understanding this and obviously a lot of years went into building that capital and then a lot of risk for selling my gear in an unprecedented act, you know, in a time that that had not been done. So a lot of firsts you guys and we get the benefit of actually seeing the video of me explaining it as I'm doing it and I, we've never had that before, right? It's always after the fact. So hope you guys learned a lot. You might want to rewatch this thing just going over what I said as I'm buying it because there's a lot of good things there. And I hope this serves you as you too go blade style. Go on blade style. <laughs>